Hello, Riverhawks fans. Welcome to the very first edition of the Riverhawk Review. Now, as I saw on Friday night, the student body here at UMass Lowell was very excited for the beginning of the hockey season. Over 1,900 UMass Lowell students came out to see the number six ranked Riverhawks take on Vermont. The Songus Center was rocking in this one. Everyone amped up for the home opener, and the Riverhawks would please their fans early. First period, that's Josh Holmstrom finding the back of the net on the pass from Michael Fallon. one nothing. but here comes Vermont on a breakaway. Keeps it himself, does Colin Markison. He ties the game at one, beating Doug Carr, the only blemish on the night for Doug Carr. That would tie the game at one, and folks, that's how this one would end. A 1-1 tie. Take another look here on the snipe by Markison. Game ends in a 1-1 overtime tie on opening night. Let's take a closer look at the game for Doug Carr. He did allow the tying goal late, but other than that, the junior goaltender stood on his head, saving 28 of the 29 shots that came his way. So a good start to the season for Doug Carr and the River Hawks. Now they may have let the victory slip away, but still tough to complain about grabbing a point early on. So while the men's hockey team was just beginning its season, the men's soccer team is continuing what has been a phenomenal season. Heading into Saturday's action, the Soccer Hawks boasted a conference-leading 11-2 record. The only thing standing in the way of 12-2 was St. Anselm College. UMass Lowell playing at home in this one. They held a 3-0 lead late, but St. Anselm would chip away here. Bruno De Silva will score the goal on the pass from Ben Mack, beats the goaltender to the back of the net and the Riverhawk lead is cut to two. But UMass Lowell has answered back so many times this year, and they're about to do it again. Checked out the shot by Majid Saeed, and he is just gonna float it, beating the goaltender to the top of the net, and that is all she wrote in this one. The Riverhawks cruise to a four to one victory, and their phenomenal season continues. Daniel Galvin was the standout for the River Hawks in this one. The junior midfielder netted the goal while also dishing out an assist. The men's soccer team has just four games remaining on its regular season schedule. While the men are in the midst of another great season, the women haven't been so fortunate. Heading into Saturday's action with American International College, the women's soccer team's record stood at just 4-6-2. and two. Things didn't get any easier on Saturday as the River Hawks were defeated by the Yellow Jackets. Six to nothing was the final. Well, the ice hockey team has been gaining most of the attention all week, but the field hockey team is pursuing a title. Wednesday, the River Hawks traveled to New York to take on the Adelphi University Panthers. UMass Lowell working toward possibly hosting the championships this year, but this would be a big one against Adelphi. UMass Lowell on the road against Adelphi, but you'd never know it. Early in the first half of this one, no score. But nice passing leads to this Rachel McCarthy goal. Sneaks past the goaltender and gives UMass Lowell the one to nothing lead. There is plenty more where that came from. Two nothing Riverhawks now when Jenna Freitas is going to wind up and let one rip. That'll find its way through. The Riverhawks up three to nothing now. And let's put some icing on the cake here. Rachel McCarthy says, hey, you know what? Twice as nice. She finds the back of the net for her second goal of the game. That would give UMass Lowell the 4 0 advantage, and that's how this one would end another victory. No surprise here. Player of the game for the Riverhawks is Rachel McCarthy. The junior continued her stellar season, netting two goals while also dishing out two assists in the victory. That's 20 goals on the season now for McCarthy. She leads all Riverhawks. The volleyball team was looking to get hot again. After winning three straight decisions, UMass Lowell dropped one to the New York Institute of Technology on Friday. They had a big chance to rebound, though, traveling to New Haven to take on the conference-leading Chargers. Unfortunately, the Chargers would be too much to handle. The Riverhawks fell 3-0 in that one, falling under 500 to 8-9 on the season. The golf team had its work cut out for it in Day 2 of the College of St. Rose Fall Shootout. Sitting in fourth place on the final day of the tournament, UMass Lowell would need a big turnaround to move up in the standings. Fortunately, they rose to the occasion, shooting a tournament best 303. That was good for second place on the tournament. Asked a comment on his team, Coach Jim Mahoney said, It was very gratifying to see the team come storming back on the second day to move from fourth place to second after a not so great first day. A good job all around. Mahoney's team will be back at it on Saturday at the American International College Shootout. The women's rowing team had something to cheer about on Sunday. The UMass Lowell Varsity 4 turned in its best performance of the season 
at the New Hampshire Championships. The four finished first overall, finishing the 5,000 meter course in just 19 minutes and 17.96 seconds. Unbelievable. That's all the time we have for this inaugural edition of Riverhawk Review. We'll be back next week with more UMass Lowell sporting news. Until then, get rowdy and go Riverhawks.